Now, would, would you then say, uh, I'm just thinking of the audience out there, uh, that, uh, I mean, somebody's looking at this and you say, wow, do I really have to go through pain because I've now just become a Christian? I mean, surely all my problems are fixed because I've accepted Jesus. <laughs> I don't know about others, yeah. but the day I became a Christian and accepted Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, then I discovered how messed up I was. Right. And right. so in the outer court, you know, you know that I always teach on the outer court. You know, there's an outer court 30 fold and a holy place 16 and most holy place 100 fold. And God wants the children to come out of that outer court. Is it possible that people have heard only the gospel of salvation, which taught them only how to be saved, but they have never tapped into the gospel of the kingdom, right. which is there to mature us in how to rule and reign? Um, I say it this way. When you think of the gospel of salvation and the gospel of the kingdom, uh -huh. the gospel of salvation is, is definitely heaven and earth. It's, it's a vertical thing. Uh, when I get saved, I know the only way I can be saved is through God. But when we think of the gospel of Jesus. the kingdom, we uh -huh. think we're thinking uh, horizontal, right? Is 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 this way? The gospel of the kingdom works horizontally, which means that I have to learn how to live life in earth. I have to mm. learn how to pull the things out of heaven and manifest them on earth. Uh, I have to learn how to engage relationships. I have to learn how to apply principles. I have to be responsible for the atmospheres that I create or the atmospheres that I go into. And and Jesus, you know, uh, one thing about Jesus is is when the storm came when he was with his apostles on, on the boat and he said, we're going to go to the other side. Well, the word was we're going to the other side. Uh, but the problem was when they got into the middle of the, of, of the, of the, of the sea, the storm came. And, and here's the thing. I... I never will know what peace is unless I come through storms. Oh, say that again. <laughs> I'll never know what peace is unless I come through storms. I can't value peace until I've felt what unrest feels like, till I feel what depression feels like. And I think the church, we do a real big injustice. When people are going through depression and when they're going through pressures, we begin to try to talk them out of it or counsel them out of it when we need to teach people how to to take that moment and 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 allow it to to grow us. I think that's why James said, "Count it all joy when you face trials and tribulations for the the growing and the producing of your faith." And and the only way I can ever find real peace is for me to come through conflict, struggle, and and adversity. And and so yeah, I believe that pain is 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 a key motivate a key you know ingredient and and something that can cause a momentum for change. So so are, are you then saying? Uh, Pastor Joey, are you saying that pain, without pain, we will never grow up? You can't. There's, n there's no way to, to grow without pain or pressure. Absolutely not. Well, when we look at uh, Joseph, uh, for instance, uh, Joseph uh, had a dream. He was to be a son in the earth. And God's intent for Joseph was to uh, be in charge of Egypt. Absolutely. You know, a type of the worldly system, right? But Joseph, after having had his dream, he shared it, and it was his own brothers. Absolutely. I mean, not even the sinners. No. <laughs> that the church sold folks. him out. It was the church so folks. So what would you say is the hardest place to grow out into maturity? Is it when a sinner does something to you, or is it when your own brothers hurt you? And that's why people don't want to really mature and go further because they're walking with offenses. I, I, I'm a hundred. That's a whole loaded question. It's a very loaded question, but I'm a hundred percent persuaded that when somebody that you have shared a relationship with, a mm -hmm. covenant relationship with, um, and 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 they've come to you and and you've exposed your dreams and your destinies and you've and you've opened yourself up and and been vulnerable to them. The people that walk from your life at that point, or the people that betray you at that point, or or or, or sell you out, that's a deep pain that you know that 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 is. I think a necessity, like a betrayal. It is betrayal and 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 betrayal even in marriage. 
when you think of marriage, you know, I think that if my spouse betrays me, that's worse than death. Mm -hmm. So there's some things worse than death. And, and I believe that a betrayal of a relationship can very well be, um, you know, one of those things that brings such a, a pain. But I believe that it can also be the momentum force that, that brings about such a growth in your life once you've learned. The danger is not to get bitter. That's the danger. Because bitterness releases what? It releases it releases all sorts of things. It can curse everything from your your money, your emotions, and your future. Okay. All right. So I want to ask Pastor Joey when we come back, I want to ask him another question. What caused Joseph to be successful in reaching his goal as a son, knowing that he had to fight against all the odds. Jo uh, Joseph had to fight against all the odds and he had a dream, he had a vision, he heard from God and uh, sold out by his brothers and then landed in a pit and the one who got him out of the pit was the other brother called Judah, which means praise will get you out of your pit. Amen. So <laughs> what we're going to look at when I come back is uh, I want Pastor Joey to tell us what motivated Joseph to carry on. What caused Joseph to receive favor? Now, uh, let me just advertise to you that I have a book that I've written on the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God unleashed. And you can get this online by going to our online website, kingdomsuccesstv.com. You can see it there. I'm just checking the monitor. You can see it there on your screen. All right. Uh, this book will equip you with kingdom principles. Do you know why I am so after the kingdom and why Jesus tried to get people to understand that the kingdom is at hand and wanting people to become born again into the kingdom. You know why? Because it's not God's will for you to miss out on your first resurrection. In Revelation 20 verse 6, when Jesus Christ returns to set up his kingdom on earth, the Bible talks about two resurrections. And if you are a, a ruler and a reigner and an overcomer and you start living as a true son and daughter in tapping into the mysteries of the kingdom, you will qualify to partake in the first resurrection and you can reign and rule with Christ for 1,000 years. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. You don't have to wait for the second resurrection after 1,000 years to be raised up with uh, sinners, unbelievers, and the like. So get this book, equip yourself in how the kingdom works, because after all, God is the, uh, Jesus Christ is the King of kings. kings. He's the Lord of lords. You must know how the kingdom works. Also, I would like to invite you to our services on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. at 25 Professional Park. We're right here in Maryville, Route 162. And uh, tell somebody about our program on Wednesday mornings, 11 a.m. in Illinois, and Thursday evenings, 9 p.m. Illinois, on Channel 8 Charter, and in St. Louis, the Missouri side, on Sundays, 4 p.m. Let's get back to Pastor Joey with that loaded question in what caused Joseph to be so successful. Are you ready for that? Amen. I am. I think that there's some key ingredients. Um, the first one that comes to mind is when we open the story of Joseph, it, it, it's his father giving him a coat of many colors, a coat of favor. But here's something that's interesting. When the brothers of Joseph were, were about to uh, push him in the pit, they ripped this coat off of him. They, uh -huh. they ripped the coat of favor off of his life. And I think that Joseph understood that 